Hey there, welcome to day three. In this one, we're gonna be talking about lists and dictionaries. But before we get started, I wanna mention this link right here. This link will actually take you to all of the reference code for this entire series. There's actual code, like what we type there, but there's also gonna be some reference articles that you can go through and use in the future in all of your projects, just so that you don't have to rewatch this entire series to get some of the concepts back. Um, so that's pretty cool. And a quick and easy way to get there as well will always be to cfe.sh slash github. That brings you to our main GitHub page for Coding for Entrepreneurs, our profile page, if you will. And we have a bunch of repositories in there that have a whole lot of different projects. 30 Days of Python is just one of those repositories. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into our Python shell now. Now, of course, I'm on Terminal with my Mac. You could be on PowerShell. Uh, using your you know, Python shell there, or you could be using idle. Doesn't really matter. We're still gonna be sticking just into the Python shell here. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Python 3, and I wanna just recap what we did last time. And that is, we did some math, right? So we use star to multiply, and then we use two stars to do an exponent. Um, pretty cool, so you know, a dash is to subtract, and then a slash is to divide. So that's some math stuff. And then our strings, we can say something like hello world with open and close quotes. And that's how we do that. And then we can print you know, the result of those things out. Not sting, but string. Okay, cool. And then we also talked about some of these errors that, that do happen from time to time um, because you might accidentally use a variable that wasn't created. We'll see that a lot as we go forward, as I've mentioned. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this and clear. And then we'll go back into Python 3. Now we're gonna go ahead and talk about lists. Now I want you to think of a list much like what you would do at home, right? So you have chores, you have a bunch of lists for your chores that you need to do. Or you have a bunch of items, a bunch of bills that you need to add up and calculate. So lists can be used for a whole variety of things. So let's go ahead and try my first one and I'll just go ahead and say, my cart, like a shopping cart, has 12.99, you know, some random numbers here, right? So as you see, the format of creating the list is starting off with a, a bracket, putting in whatever your data type is, and then a comma, and then the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. This list isn't actually that strict. So like you can do a lot of things in each block of the list, right? So in each item that you have here. So one of the cool things that Python has built into it is this function called sum. And if you just type out sum parentheses and then put a list of numbers in there, you will actually get what the sum value of those numbers are. That's pretty cool. And you know, by chance I was really close to doing $500, which is interesting or 500 numbers total. Right. Um, so having these numbers is really cool, but let's say for instance, I am on my web application and I wanted to add another thing to my cart. I would go ahead and just say my cart dot append and then that new item, whatever that cost would be. Let's go ahead and say it's $39.99. So what that did was add to my cart, which we can see by printing out my cart and that will actually show me all of the items that are now in here. It has grown, right? So originally it was just four items in here, again, denoted by the commas separating each item. And now there's five items in there. Now there's a shortcut to actually find that out and that's another built-in method called len. That's short for length, like getting the length of any given item. We're gonna go ahead and say length of my cart. It is five items. That's pretty cool. Now, what if I wanted to remove one of those items? What if I'm like, hey, you know, item number 32, I don't need that one anymore. So how do I actually remove that one? Ooh, that's tricky. So let's, before we actually remove that one, let's actually talk about how I can ex access that single item. So what we see here is we have five items and they're all in a specific position. Every time I reference this, the position that they're in doesn't change at all. It's always in that position, right? So 1299 is always in that first position. 
312 is always in that second position, 32 third, and so on. This is always true about lists unless you change it or unless something in the program changes it. But, but if by default, they will never change the order that they're in. This is really nice because now we know we can move with confidence by saying that, hey, I know for sure just by looking at this that the item that's in position three is always going to be the number 32 for this particular list. So how do I actually grab that item? Well, there's a way to do it by called, it's called indexing. So we can actually look up something by its index, by its location in the list. So let's go ahead and say my cart, and then we use curly brackets to do that, or I mean, excuse me, we use squared brackets to find some item in here. Now again, we're gonna be finding them by their position number. We wanna find where they are in this list. So what's our intuition here? It's gonna be one, position one, is it that? No. Is it position two? No. Is it position three? Yes, that is the one that we want, is number 32. So I'm gonna put a three in here, hit enter. Wait a minute, I got number 142. That's position four. Well, this is one of the things that's a little peculiar about programming is when you talk about positions of lists or their index, this is going to be one less than you expect it to be. In other words, you and me, we start by counting from one, two, three, four, and so on. Programs or computers, on the other hand, start at zero. They go zero, one, two, three, and so on. So the actual first position has an index of zero. So this is at zero, this is at one, this is at two, three, and four. Riveting. So now what we can do is just say my cart is at position two. So you take your intuition from what you would think it would be, you could count it up and say, hey, it's at three, and then you just subtract one and then you'll find the correct item there. So that's, that's how you actually access things with an index number. Now we actually do this a lot. So when you build out programs, you don't have to try and cram and remember all this stuff just yet. Instead, what you wanna do is just have a general idea that this is how you define a list. You can add items to a list with append. You can get a specific item with the location or the number as to where it's located, right? So the position number that it's located and that's called the index. And then you can do stuff with that as well. So now that I have this referenced, I can, you know, of course, multiply that number because this is now kind of like what we did with an individual variable, but instead what it's doing is it's taking a specific variable and looking for a specific position in that variable. But now that we've talked about positions, I wanna just show you one more thing and say my string equals to hello world. And then now let's think of this position concept with this string. So the string is denoted by the quotes on the outside. And then I have all of these characters in here, right? Including the space. So we can say the length of my string is going to be the length of every single individual character in here. And now if I wanted to get the O on hello world by its position or the index in this string, I can do that. I just need to count one, two, three, four, five. So it's five in, which means that it's at position four, or index four. So I could say my string at index four gives me the string of O or that's pretty cool. This is the position, this is how we actually access this data. Now again, this the reason for this is so we can move this around, right? So like if your program was gone and you needed to re-reference your cart, let's say for instance, I scrolled all the way down here and I'm like, hey, what is in my cart again? I don't remember. Well, we have the variable so I can re-access it and here's all of the dollar amounts in there. Now, of course, we could go a little bit further with this and have also my items and say the names of these items. Let's go ahead and say this is a mouse. This is a laptop. 
this is a mic, this is a screen, and this is a snack. I don't know. So now I have my items and my cart, so I can go my items, and I have all of these things, right? There's the same number of items as there is the same number in our cart. So what I can then say is, which item of mine is $312? Well, again, how do we find that 312 there? Well, we do my cart and then we count the positions. So one, two, and then we subtract one or we just remember zero, one. And so my cart at position one is 312. My items at position one is laptop. Cool, so that means the laptop is 312, according to how we have these two lists here. right? So it gives me this sort of memory of what's going on here. Now this is not perfect, and this is certainly not what's called a database, but it at least allows me to see that, hey, I can compare these different lists, I can have different items in these lists, and something else that's really cool is I can have a list full of lists. So I'll go ahead and say my products equals to my items and my cart. You could replace my cart with my prices. And now I see my products and I can see all of the individual items in here. So that's pretty cool. That is the gist of lists. There's a lot more things that lists do and we will see those as we go forward. But we wanted to just get the understanding, the base understanding of this. And that is, first of all, creating a list with those square brackets and every item in there separated by a comma. And then we can add things to it with dot append, like just calling the variable name dot append. You can also append directly to the brackets as well. Um, and then we can see the length of it. We can grab any given position, starting with zero up to however long the list item is. And then we can compare two different lists here with that same position, which is cool. And then we can have a list of lists. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about dictionaries. Let's jump into the Python shell here. And the first thing I wanna do is actually define a list. And I'll go ahead and define my list like I did last time, just a few numbers. And then I'll go ahead and say my data. And this is now defined by curly brackets, right? So curly brackets with key value pairs. That's what it's referred to as key value pairs. Now the key, think of it in terms of like a dictionary, the actual book. The key is the term that you're trying to look up, right? Let's say for instance, you're trying to look up the term Python in a physical book dictionary. You look for the key or the term Python, and then you find its value or the definition. That's how dictionaries work, very similar to that. So in my case, I'll just go ahead and say name, and that's Justin Mitchell. Okay, so notice that the first part of this is called a key. We name that or we declare that with a string. That's it, and then we use colon and then some sort of value here. So this value can be a string itself, it can be a list, it can be a number, it could be another dictionary. It's kind of up to you on how that portion actually works. So this is now my new dictionary, right? So if I hit enter, I now wanna actually grab out the value of name, right? I wanna know what that value is. I wanna use that key to actually find what the value of it is. It's really simple, you just say my data and you wanna do name. So like our list, we are looking it up based off of something. In this case, the something is the actual key itself. So we hit enter and this will give me that, that value. But you're also like, well, hey, you know, it, it seems like it's in position zero. How about we add some data to it? I'm gonna scroll up a little bit and add location here and say California hit enter. Notice that I did a comma to separate the key value pairs. This is called a key value pair. This is called a key value pair, which hopefully makes sense because this is a key, this is the value, and they are associated to each other, therefore key value pair. But much like lists, we separate those things with a comma. So now what we wanna think about is like, well, 
this one seems to be in position zero. This one seems to be in position two, or position one, rather. So one, two. Seems like that, right? So if we did my data in position zero and hit enter, I get what's called a key error. Now, hopefully this is actually making sense because we only have two keys in our dictionary. That's name and location. And we can actually see what those keys are by saying my data dot keys. That gives me a, a value of the two keys that we have. And if we want to treat that as a list, we could just say list my keys or my data keys in parentheses and all that. That is a built-in method to actually get what the key values are, right? So it's actually grabbing the different key items in here and allowing me to do that. So that list, I could then use that position indexing with position zero. Hopefully just by looking at this, you can assume or guess what that value is gonna be and that is name. Okay, so to actually add items to my data, it's no longer append, right? So if I did my data dot append and I said something like my new key value pairs, let's go ahead and do my data dot append and I'll put another dictionary in here and I'll go ahead and say that um, uh, occupation and I'll say coder. A dictionary or a dict does not have the attribute append like a list does. So to actually add something to it, we can go my data and then we just add based off of the key value pair, similar to like when we were looking it up up here, you can do that same thing, but just change the value of whatever that is. Or if that's not in there, then it will be, right? So if I add oc as in occupation, and I set that equal to coder, I hit my data, and there you go. It's actually adding that key value pair in there because it wasn't in there in the first place. So that's pretty cool. So. Dictionaries, just like lists, we use a ton. So don't worry if you're not like fully, hey, I, I absolutely grasp why and when I would use either one. Um, the, the key thing here is you'll use a list when the ordering matters, right? So if you wanna keep things in order, a list is really, really good. And also if you're just having a bunch of numbers that you plan on summing up, a list is also very good for that. Now, when you actually want a bunch of data that like, more describe something, but it does it in a consistent way, a dictionary is really good. So a good example of this would be, let's say user one, and I'll just say name equals to James Bond, user two equals to name Ned Stark. Then I can say my users equals to user one, and user two with those underscores in there. And now I've got my users in here and it's a list of users or a list of dictionaries that now I can grab those dictionaries. Now, you don't have to have a list like this. And actually in this case, the list order doesn't really matter, but the individual items have a consistent feel across them, right? Each one of those items has a name and has a value associated to that name so then I can reference this list to grab individual users from this particular list. So that's dictionaries and lists. That completes day three. If you have questions on this, let me know, but actually hang on to them because day four, we're actually gonna go through this data again in a similar way by using something called iteration. So we can actually go through each individual item, but that's gonna be tomorrow in day four. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.